right, guys, we're back, and I'm going to read you a story called Let It Snow. It may snow tonight. I am going to turn the thing around so that you can see the book and I can read the book. And I hope it works out right. Let It Snow, Toot and Puddle, Let It Snow by Holly Hobby. I can't get the pages started. Sorry, guys. Christmas was just around the corner. We've already had Christmas, haven't we? And Puddle hadn't seen a single snowflake yet. Just let it snow, he wistfully pleaded to the sky. There had to be snow. His friend Toot was more concerned about another matter altogether. He wanted to give Puddle a wonderful surprise for Christmas. But the best present ever, he just knew it. That the best present was usually something you made yourself, and a one-of-a-kind thingamajig was uh, not just a what's-it anyone could buy at a store. One year, he made Puddle a bright red sleigh and sled, and they named it W.P. Rocket. Another year, he gave his pal a mysterious seed pot and waited half the winter to see how it would bloom. And just last Christmas, he presented Puddle with a real raft. Big enough for two, the W.P. Pond Lily Queen. And they couldn't wait to spring it into, into spring to launch it. So they looked like they was on the ice with it. This year, though, Toot was really stumped. Puddle was a contented homebody. He was... A cook, a gardener, an artist. He loved trees, birds, and his best friend you could have. And what could he possibly give old Puds for Christmas? Hmm. Puds, he called him. Cook, gardener, artist. Of course, Puddle was thinking to himself about the same question about Toot. Get my words mixed up, sorry. One year, he knit him a wool sweater, sweater, robin egg blue. And another Christmas, he gave him a purple bounce, ball for bouncing on. There was another year, a giant plum pudding, which kept them merrily stuffed for a month. Hmm. Puddle knew that, too, inside and out. He loved hiking and adventuring strange places. He loved maps and gears and exciting weather. He was brave and daring and jolly, and he was his best friend ever. What was just the thing that was good for old Toodles this year? Hmm. When Puddles, when Puddle found his cousin Opal to ask her opinion, she said a little cuddly something would be nice, for, like a homemade doll for Toot. Really? Asked Puddle. I think he'd like that, Opal replied. I think Opal might have been thinking about herself there. She'd like to have a doll. When Toot called Opal with the same question concerning Puddle, she said the same thing. Maybe a homemade doll of some kind. A doll? Toot was puzzled. Something soft and cute, she said. The night began, and it began to snow. Do you think that'll look like that tonight? I don't know. The next morning, Toot and Puddle awoke to a new world. The snow had been silently falling all through the night and now blanketed everything with a hushed, gleaming luster. The skies called. Uh, Toot called, where are the skis? I've got them, Puddle cried. Let's go, eagerly. The path through the woods became a magical journey. The two friends skied along in silence, stirring by the beauty and sur that surrounded them. When they stopped to rest, Puddle said, I wish I could take this morning and put it in my pocket and keep it forever. Me too, Toot sighed. It's perfect. Oh, there we go. But then by evening, a hard rain began to fall. Oh no, Puddle protested. And the next day, the glorious snow was gone. I can't believe it, Tooted frowned. Toot frowned. Tooted. Ha <laughs> ha. Neither can I, said Puddle, sadly. I was all set to go sledding. His spirits had been momentarily dampened. Hmm. Still, Christmas was coming, and it was almost here. Snow or no snow, and the two friends soon plunged into a state of busy excitement.
As for presents, Toot spent every spare minute in his workshop in the basement, clearly inspired at last. And Puddle was up to something equally private and absorbing in the attic. On Christmas Eve, the two friends emerged from their workrooms and each of them carried a handsomely wrapped something or another. Wouldn't you like to open your present right now, Toot asked. We have to wait until tomorrow, Puddle said, when Opal comes. Christmas morning in a woodcock pocket was brimming with anticipation. Opal soon arrived as the youngest. She was the first open presents. How did you know what I wanted? She wondered appreciatively. It was a lucky guess, said Puddle. What will you name them? Well, said Opal, I'll have to get to know them first. One is probably a toot and one is probably a puddle. What is a puddle? asked Puddle. And what in the world is a toot? said Toot. You know, Opal replied. I'm sure they'll be best friends, but one is one way and the other is the other. Oh, said the friends together. Merry Christmas, Toot beamed, presenting his enormous gift to Puddle, and his friend unwrapped the package slowly and carefully. I love it, said Puddle. I made it myself, Toot said proudly. I know, it's for sledding. Snow or no snow. Let's go sledding today, said Opal. And Merry Christmas to you, Puddle said, presenting his package. Toot tried to con remain calm, but couldn't quite suppress his eagerness. It is you and me, said Puddle shyly. He asked, that snowy day in the woods? It's perfect, said Toot. He must have painted him a picture. And standing back to admire his friend's work, there we are. Let's look at this picture. You and me. Oh, he did. He was able to hold that in his pocket, wasn't he? That's a pretty cute story. It's a little long. He has a lot of big words. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later.